Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about what we're doing with NetBox at Major League Baseball. Um, uh, as you said, um, I am a longtime uh, user of NetBox um, throughout kind of my career, but we've only been using it recently at uh, MLB, so I'll talk about that. The focus of this presentation will be how we are using uh, NetBox uh, both holistically uh, throughout the systems we are developing, but specifically on a network configuration backup service that, that uh, we do and use every day. So let's get started. Uh, just a quick note about me. So uh, Jeremy, thank you for the introduction. Um, I have been around for a bit. Um, I've been exclusively focused on the uh, area of network automation since about 2012, so coming up almost on 10 years. Um, I, uh, I am, I'm a software engineer, um, and I am now in the network engineering team at Major League Baseball. So I'm an embedded uh, software engineer as part of that team. Uh, it's my first time at being at a customer side. So before at Major League Baseball, I was 20 years at different vendors, you know, with various positions, you know, software engineering, sales engineering, systems engineering kind of stuff. Love doing the community stuff. Um, so thank you again for the opportunity and I hope everybody um, gets a bit out of what I'm about to show you today. So our motivation uh, really is to increase, uh, you know, our ability in network reliability engineering. So that's kind of an initiative. And as part of that, we want to automate our backup configurations nightly. Uh, we need to put that into a version controlled system so that we can, you know, examine or revert back to any point in time. And one of the things that we're often asked to do is to look at uh, changes over time, meaning, you know, hey, what's changed between today and yesterday? Or did anybody make an ACL change that involved this specific IP address? So I think that's a pretty common um, task folks have. And I'm going to show you the solution that we put together uh, with NetBox and some other components. So what I'm showing here is not everything that we're connected into at MLB, but a large kind of you know, cross section of the systems that um, I'm integrating with. And for me, really network automation is a lot to do about integration of systems together to create reliable outcomes. And, and reliable outcomes is, is really kind of the, the, the goal and point because if we build systems um, that are not reliable, then people don't trust them. And if people don't trust them, they don't want to use them. So we started building with NetBox as a um, back end to our chat op system. And, um, and this has to do with the data consistency that we wanted to present to our users. So back last year, I presented at Interop 19 about our chat op system and what we're doing with our ballparks. And so we started using NetBox as the inventory system to include all of our ballpark infrastructure so that when our chat op systems presented a series of drop downs and, and widgets, you know, which devices and which interfaces to select from, it was actually going to pull from NetBox. But since that time, you know, we've grown the use of NetBox to include um, other systems, um, some of which you're seeing here and created a number of different services between those systems. But the data consistency is really kind of a main point because when we want to exchange data between systems, they need to be um, kind of, they need to be in sync with one another. So what does that mean? Um, with NetBox, for example, you know, we use the device status uh, field quite a bit. And we want to make sure that we're only going to be uh, backing up devices that we want to back up, not all the devices, uh, for example. So we might uh, use information from our monitoring systems to determine you know, what we want to back up, uh, because if we have devices that are offline, we don't want to back them up. And likewise, if we use NetBox to indicate we're decommissioning a device, you know, for example, as part of our, our refresh cycle of infrastructure, we might say, well, this is a device we're going to decommission. As we decommission that device, we might want to tell our monitoring systems to stop monitoring uh, those devices. So there is a lot of two-way communication uh, between NetBox and various systems in our uh, state. And so I look at that as an audit remediation closed loop workflows. And, and really the work that I try to do is to constantly increase the reliability 
of those outcomes and ensure that we have data consistency across our, our infrastructure. So specifically with NetBox, uh, you know, it is our inventory source of truth. And as I mentioned, we only want to back up devices that are in this uh, in the active state. So whether you know a, a user went into the system to manually put it into an offline state for, for reasons of maintenance, or our audit remediation systems are automatically setting that offline state, we want to make sure that we're only backing up those devices. But NetBox also includes a lot of uh, devices that are not uh, network oriented, like say console servers. And what we tend to do is use the tagging mechanism within that box to, uh, you know, tactically say these are devices we don't want to back up, and that might be specific to a manufacturer, you know, like say for example, all of our console servers we don't want to back up, or we might just want to not back up certain devices at certain points in time. So we we use tags as again a means to determine whether or not we want to perform a service in this case a backup. One of the other features that uh, I was introduced to recently was the custom link feature. And, uh, and this allows us to add buttons to the pages. And in this case, we've added a button that says, well, for this particular device, go right to GitHub just so I can see what was the configuration you know, that was last backed up. And if I were to click that device or click that button, it takes us to our enterprise GitHub environment and takes us directly to that um, device config, which is really cool. And the way to set that up takes about three to five seconds, honestly. Um, going into the administrative page, we just pick the, uh, the, you know, the area of NetBox we want to create the button to, we give the button some text. And using the device object name, you know, we just reference that into the URL to open up. So that was a pretty simple introduction there. And then uh, selecting the new window uh, option here, I recommend. So this will open up a new window when somebody clicks the button. And it's a very easy, it reduces the friction between going from one system to another. When, uh, when we look at the backup service itself now, you know, the way that that operates uh, today is, you know, we have a jump server and that jump server is uh, authorized or ACL controlled so that we can access our devices. So that jump server has a cron job, that cron job runs a bash script, that bash script executes a series of playbooks. And those playbooks are used to first, you know, get, you know, pull down the GitHub repository of our current configs, then goes to our network devices, you know, pulls up the, the network configurations, uh, and then stores them back into GitHub. Now, an area that I'm going to talk about here in a bit more detail is the way in which we decide uh, we want to back up the devices, as I said, um, is partly the, um, the status field of, of uh, NetBox. So we're, we have a dynamic inventory script that goes to NetBox and says, hey, tell me what devices you want to pull down or I want to back up. But it also is used to uh, gather information about our network and environment. So uh, we we used a dynamic script uh, versus a plugin, and I was asked about that, so I wanted to spend a few moments talking about why we're doing a dynamic inventory script, and more importantly, why I did it as a custom one versus just using something that is generally available uh, from the community. Uh, so when we first started uh, with the backup process, we started with Ansible Tower, and uh, which is something that we use here, and we have a number of uh, you know, job templates or playbooks installed for the network engineers to use. And so we need to put our NetBox inventory into Ansible Tower so that they can use it. And as a function of setting up Ansible Tower, um, my only ability was to add an inventory script. I don't own and operate our Ansible Tower infrastructure because it's widely used by other teams. And so I first started with uh, inventory scripts, and this is the way that I could I could use it. Uh, we also use the same Ansible uh, inventory script, um, you know, on our jump server. So if somebody wanted to run or write their own playbooks and run them not through Tower, they're going to be using the same exact code in both environments. And having that consistency is pretty important, you know, to make sure that the same sets of features are available for our inventory script. But the other aspect is, is that our inventory script allows us to pull data from all these other systems in our environment. So 
I can use the same code across these other systems when I want to perform our audit remediation workflows. Or as I'm pulling down the inventory from NetBox, I want to enrich the, the host VARs or the group VARs based on uh, other systems. You know, for example, if we look at our discovery and assessment um, system, I might want to go to that system and say, well, I want more additional information about this device based on the latest assessment of that device. And then um, finally, one of the things that I've done with the the, uh, the inventory script is uh, the used it with args parse so I can pass parameters, uh, filtering parameters using the kind of flags or args parse mechanisms. And this allows us uh, a couple of interesting um, results. One is is when we're defining inventories, uh, for example, in uh, in Tower, you know, these are just like any parameter command line options that we want. And so I can put them here in Ansible uh, Tower. Or if I was using this on a um, on a jump server, I can dev test with these uh, flags. So I can use the Ansible inventory uh, command line and then pass parameters and then see the results of what I'm getting out of my inventory script. And this allows us to make sure that we're pulling the data from the right places and we're enriching the data in the right ways. So now I'm going to uh, move on to talk about um, why we're using GitHub as our uh, back end. Uh, the first is, is that we tag our releases. Uh, and I'm presuming most folks are familiar with GitHub. Probably most folks are familiar with tagging of releases. Um, but I'm going to talk about specifically why that's important for network backups. And then I'm going to show you a couple of the use cases we use to uh, examine files and differences over time using either the web UI for GitHub or uh, some command line tools. So if you were to go into uh, the GitHub repo and you looked at the tagged releases, you can see that you know, every release, which we run nightly, has a, a tagged timestamp. And this allows us to then download um, you know, the complete zip file for all of the config files all at once. So we have them nicely packaged up and we know holistically the configs across our entire network, you know, all in one place. And we can, you know, download that zip package or tarball at any point in time. So that's a really nice artifact of just tagging. We didn't, we're not creating separate branches. Uh, it's all using just tags. So we have a single branch, it's just master, and we tag each of the releases nightly. Uh, one of the things that I learned how to do in the in the web UI is to use the slash compare uh, endpoint. So if you have a GitHub repo and then you just tack on slash compare to the end of it, you'll get this web page. Um, there's no button that gets you there, which I found kind of odd. But if you know how to get there, it will then allow you to compare changes. And we're mostly familiar with comparing changes across branches. But GitHub allows you this ability to do these time markers, and that will allow you to do diff compares across time. And so here's an example of comparing between two dates. You know, I want to say, well, what's changed between, say, May 13th and May 1st? And once you run that diff change, it'll give you kind of this, this top line output of how many files have changed. And for me, each file is a config for a device. And then you'll see the patch diff uh, output so you can see exactly what was added or removed. Uh, of course, I have to fuzz out our actual configs here, so that's why they, they appear blurry. What I found to be really interesting is when you need to get some very granular and specific controls, uh, you can, or results, you can do that using the git log command. So here I'm showing I'm doing this on our CentOS server, and I'm in the directory where the git repo was pulled down and where I'm, you know, backing up our config. So we always can go to our jump server, we can see the configs that were always backed up. Uh, it is in the form of the git repo, so that means we can use these git commands. And it's really the git log command that gives you, you know, all of these nice uh, capabilities to um, do searching. So I can say, you know, since yesterday, just show me all the names, which is really just show me all the file names that have changed, and each file name really represents a device. So this really gives me a quick view of like, well, what devices have changed, you know, since yesterday, and you can give specific timestamps and dates and whatnot, but they also support these kind of humanized, you know, friendly names like yesterday or two days ago, that kind of thing. 
if you provide the dash p option for for patch it'll show you the changes that have changed again in that same patch format that you saw in the web ui the the commands also allow you to give specific files so if you have a specific uh, host name uh, you know host naming convention for example these are all of our hosts in new york city um, you can just do the dash dash command and then filter basic uh, uh, based on uh, file patterns or specific file names, and it'll show you exactly what's changed just for those files. I thought one of the most interesting features was uh, searching for content. So if I wanted to know, has any configuration changed in the last week that had anything to do with this specific IP address, you know, and then show me those changes, you can get these really nice uh, fine granular controls. So uh, in summary, you know, we use NetBox and uh, some custom dynamic inventory scripts to selectively uh, figure out what we want to back up. And that uses information, not just that's specifically stored in NetBox, but also pulled dynamically from other systems in our environment. Uh, we use GitHub for version control and change visibility so that we have um, really, um, you know, the, the abilities that we need to both have for audit and for, oh my God, what's changed in the last day because something broke kind of use cases. Um, we are using Ansible to perform these uh, backups. Um, it does take a bit of time. Uh, you know, I've measured uh, for 1800 devices or so, it takes about an hour to go through the process of doing backups. Um, I'm sure I could probably optimize these playbooks a bit. Um, I've got some familiarity running uh, Nornir, um, perhaps running through Nornir um, might you know, speed up the process a bit, but there's always trade-offs. You know, we started with Ansible uh, because we were using the Ansible tower system, the Ansible modules, uh, specifically for the Git functionality and all, all sorts of the uh, network communication, uh, you know, for the backup commands and the, the, the network CLI commands. It just, you know, gave us a really quick leg up. I'm sure you know we could do the same with Nornir, um, maybe speed it up a bit if we if we'd like to. Uh, and with that, that's uh, the presentation I wanted to make with you guys. Hopefully that was uh, interesting. And I don't know if we're taking questions, but I will be making these slides you know generally available for anybody that would like to see the material. There's also some bonus slides in in um, in this deck that that show you all the playbooks and the shell scripts that are used by the cron job. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Uh, appreciate that. Um, regarding questions, we've got maybe time for one question. Uh, there's a question in chat. It is, uh, do you have a common authentication system between NetBox and GitHub so that you can jump between one or the other without further authentication? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So the way that that works is, uh, and I'll bring up this slide here. Um, we we use we are using what are called deployment keys, SSH deployment keys. So the way in which uh, this system is able to get and push back to the GitHub Enterprise is that that specific repo was configured with a with a um, SSH deployment key that had both read and write access. So this system here, which is controlled by LDAP and all the things that you you said. Um, all come from our same same authorization system that we do use. Yeah. 